Well. I think we are back. Again. Or not. So, are we back? I think we are. It's, um, yeah, it is, it is restream. I just checked it, and a uh, restream is indeed losing the connection every now and then, which I think is, um, I think the problem is on restream's end. I don't see anything wrong on my end. Um, I don't see anything where I can check, like, what the current status of the restream server is. Like, I'm trying to find something. Like, most websites these days have, like, a thing. Wait, they do have a speed test. That looks alright. Some of the servers do show up quite a long response time, but those are not the servers I'm on, so... Uh, the server I'm on actually shows a pretty quick response time, so that's kind of weird. That's kind of weird. Mm. Yeah. So, what are we gonna do? I really am. I'm. I really am not looking forward to like doing a stream where the whole thing disconnects every every time. So. Um. God damn it! Why is this so annoying? I really hate it. I really hate it when stuff like this happens. Um. I am here. Yes. I am here. I'm just figuring out what is going on. Yeah, I'll give it one more chance. Okay, I'll give it one more chance. If if it if it disconnects again, then that will be the end of the stream and then we'll probably try it again next week, but I think it's on restream's end though. Well, like, if it happens, then usually what you just have to do is just go to my channel page on YouTube and just um, refresh the page. Because when I am live on YouTube, it'll actually show up right on the front page of my channel. So um, if the live, live stream cuts out suddenly, then that is not because I'm doing it. It's I, I just don't end it like that. I always let you guys know when I end the live stream. Um, so I think... I think it's actually restream because my internet is fine. My internet connection is fine. That's not that's not the the problem here. Um at least I think. Yeah, I'm ju I'm just having a good connection. Um plus I would have seen that I, I was also able to check like other websites when it happened, so it's not my internet connection. Um it is definitely restream that is causing it. But their speed test doesn't show anything weird, though. That's what I don't understand. Well, I mean, I guess it's back now. Let's see if they already have said something on Twitter. No. Let me, let me search on Twitter and see if anybody else is complaining about it. Mm, 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 mm. Don't see anything about people being mad on restream either, so probably not it. I don't know. It's weird. But it cannot be on my end because I haven't changed anything. It's literally just I just have the same setup I'm always using and that always works, so I can't see how it could be on my end. Well, we'll just um we'll just keep going and uh if it cuts out one more time, then uh 
definitely join the Discord server because that's where I'll keep you guys updated if something happens. Um, and if it if it cuts out again, then just um, yeah, just go to the Discord and I'll let you guys know. And uh, we'll probably go, we'll probably do an, uh, another stream next week then. But let's hope it keeps on working. Let's hope restream uh, doesn't cut out the stream again. That's like a little bit of a smaller version of the chord progression. Could work. <laughs> oh, wow. I wasn't expecting that. Um... <clears throat> 10 viewers back. Yeah, I see 15 viewers right now, so that's about as much as before um, it cut out the second time. So we didn't lose much... We, we didn't lose any people when it cut out the second time, so that's good. But we did lose about, I think, about 30 people or something when it cut out the first time, when we lost the connection for the first time, so it kind of sucks. Let's hear that with the um, with the Kodo instrument, actually. Can I maybe? Add some compression to this, that would maybe be nice. Or I could... I'm going to compress the, um, the piano a little bit. To kind of, you know, kind of squash the dynamic range a bit. And just... So let's just take this, but make it a bit, a bit louder. And I need to make these chords a bit bigger for this section. Okay, it's still working? Good.
Okay, this is this would be a, a, a good thing to start with for now. And god damn it, I need to piss again. This whole thing that I this whole thing just now I was drinking and uh getting all like uh, I was like, oh what's going on? What's going on? And now, now I need to piss. Um okay, I'll be back in just a little bit. I'll let you guys listen to this thing. Um yeah, it sounds a bit different now, I guess. Nothing comes in until here, right? Okay, then that works. I'll just copy this for now. I just hope it doesn't sound weird when the strings come in. Because they play slightly different chords than the piano now. Actually still sounds alright, I think. <coughs> Okay, yeah, that'll work for now. I'll uh, be back in just a little bit. And then we will uh, keep working on this. I hope it's not going to cut out when I'm back. Or when I'm gone. <laughs> um, I'll be back in, uh, in like a few, uh, in like a minute or so. Well, it looks like it's still working. More and more people are coming back. I see 20 viewers now. Thank you all for coming back. Um... Restream had some issues, so if you're just joining in again, Restream cut out the stream to both Twitch and YouTube at the same time. And um, yeah, that was uh, why I suddenly was offline. It's not me, I was not supposed to go offline, but it just happened. So, I'm uh, going to take a short bathroom break right now though, I'll be back in about a minute, and then uh, we'll continue working on this and see if we can actually make it into a good piece. Because we have a good amount of ideas now. But it kind of just needs to be worked out better. And I do have an idea of what I want to do around here at the end of this section. And that that's how and how I want to transition into the part where the uh the orchestra is gonna come in. So yeah, let's try and do that. And uh I guess uh put in the shakuhachi flute. So I'll be back in about a minute.
Okay. I'm back. <clears throat> Let's see. What are people saying? Um, I'm late to join, but what is that Kodo Harpy sound from? It's indeed from the Kodo Nation library from uh, Impact Soundworks. It's a really nice library. Um, it has three instruments. The regular Kodo, a bass Kodo, which is obviously a bigger Kodo instrument and thus it's, it has lower pitches. And it also comes with the Japanese Xiaomi Sen, which obviously is another string instrument that you would get in Japan. And yes, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Dream went down again? Not again, right? It did went down a little while ago, but not again, right? Really annoying if it, if it happens again. Let me check, actually. Um, let me quickly check the um, status of my internet service provider. See if there's anything going on. No, nothing right now, so that looks all right. Well, I mean, they are kind of showing that there are some issues in pretty much the entire country. So, but it's not like actually down. It's not like it's showing that it's down. It's just like there's probably a lot of internet use at the moment. But that might have something to do with it, though. What is that? That They've gotten eight people that said there was something wrong with their internet. Well, that's not that many. That's not that many. That's like pretty common at any moment, to be honest. There's always going to be a couple of people that are having issues, so. <laughs> but I mean, it, it is showing something on my internet service provider that they have been getting a lot more, like, you know, messages about complaints and stuff like that, so. Yeah, it says, right now it says potential issues. You have a Windows 10 notification. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, and I know exactly what it's about. It's about the fact that I need to update my computer. Which I know, because I saw that before I started the live stream. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to do that now. I'll do that after the live stream. So I know what that notification is about. Okay. Yeah, the Kodo is Impact Soundworks. I actually already said that. <laughs> but yeah, it is. So, let me move this out of the way. Um, I think these two are exactly the same. Yeah, they are exactly the same, so I can get rid of that. I'm going to start it right here, though. So, this will be a good start, I think. I mean, I, I kind of still want to have, like, an intro in front of it with, like, that typical... Japanese thing to kind of like see I'm envisioning this is all gonna be for like um, This is all gonna be for like a, um, a City Skylines uh, Gaming video series that I've been working on which is kind of something that I just like to do for fun So if you're just joining in um, that's why I'm making this music. I am 
uh, currently recording episodes for that series, which is going to be on a different channel. It's not going to be my music channel at all. It also won't be my main focus. Um, I just want to get the first couple of episodes done now because I have recorded a lot of screen capture footage and it's literally over 500 gigabytes. Um, so I'm like, yeah, I need to uh, edit those videos so I can get rid of all that, all, all that raw footage. Um, and I need some music for that. So that's why we're making this. And I kind of I'm envisioning it to start with like um, maybe a hit of the Tyco, so maybe like that, and then my logo comes in screen, so that that will be the first thing you see, and then during the logo, um, right after that, maybe the first um, visuals, like the first shots, would um, would kind of fade in, so that it goes from black to like the actual screen capture footage. Um, and I'll be making cinematic footage with the with the things that I'm making in that game, and then I think right after that the Kodo or right after the 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 Taiko drum, I would um, add like something like that to kind of set the vibe. Right, we're going for Japanese because that's what the whole city build is about as well. So, you know, I really the game by default does not look cinematic. It looks really cartoonish, but I played a game so heavily modded that it that it actually looks pretty damn realistic. And I'm now building something as realistic as I can. And obviously, I'm going to make like cinematic shots that are gonna look like cinematic shots, right? Um, so kind of pushing the boundaries of that game, and it's just something I like to play in my free time. So. A lot of people on the City Skyline subreddit, they know what I'm building, and a lot of them are actually telling me, you should do a couple of videos, and I'm like, yeah, why not? So that's why I'm kind of kind of, kind of, of doing this, um, and since I would like to at least be able to, if I get like maybe a thousand subscribers on that channel, then I could monetize the videos, obviously, um, but if I'm gonna use like just some, some random traditional Japanese music, I can't monetize that, so I need to make my own music for it, and that would be good content for this channel, right? So it's like a win-win situation. <laughs> it's always uh, like I'm kind of like uh, making use of that, I guess. Like that would be a good start, and then maybe have the logo cut out with maybe one of those um, classic taiko uh, uh, drummers like vocal shouts i i have those as well they come with this taiko library let me check where they are um let me load up the right here vocal shout ensemble maybe with that one And yes, I am indeed, I am indeed thinking about making a liquid drum and bass remix at some point. Um, like actual, like heavy drum and bass is not going to work for that series because most people, it's just going to be too heavy for most people to watch, right? A lot of people are probably going to be annoyed by such music. But if I'm going to turn it into like um, a liquid drum and bass track, that would be a lot more like, you know, it's something more people can, can listen to and get into even when they don't necessarily listen to drum and bass. Um, so yeah, that's definitely what I was thinking to, uh, to do. <laughs> okay, maybe a different one. <laughs> Maybe not a, a vocal shout, but it, it it is kind of an interesting sound. I could do that maybe, have it on the first. Okay, so we're starting right there. Let's see. Let's see if I can make that work.
And then I need... Uh, that part here. So now we're gonna get... And maybe like one of those um, classic like um, symbol rolls. I'm I don't think those are part of this Tycho library though. Uh, wine barrel, she made Daiko. Oh, it does have this Kane bell. Let's try that one out. Let's see what that one sounds like. So right now, let me rename these because otherwise I'm gonna lose track of what what is. This is the Tycho wine barrel. This is. The vocal shout. And then this is the Shime Daiko. Shime Daiko. And then I have here. Oh, this is another Taiko instrument. That's the other one. Let's just get rid of that one. That's this that's a different library. Um let me copy this one. I can get rid of all of that. And let's load up that bell. Kane bell. Not sure if that is... Nah, it's not really the type of thing I was looking for. Maybe that other library has one, though. Let's see. Um, that's actually a different Tycho library. It's called 9 Volt Audio Tycho 2. They also have a bunch of... Oh, yeah, here. They have medals. Maybe that includes, like, one of those classic... Um, yeah, those kind of things. <laughs> but not really any um like rolls with that i think that's a bit of a shame you know those um symbol rolls are really nice oh it does have different I mean, I can make it myself, right? Where are we? Which key? I mean, I can just do... But it's kind of, it's, it kind of sounds weird. That's why they made two of the same sample. Of course, if you... That's actually pretty clever. To have, I, I was like, why are they putting like two of the exact same sample in here? But it's actually pretty clever because if you just hit the same one a bunch of times in a row, every time you hit hit a note, it basically cuts off the last. So you get this, which doesn't really sound realistic because it kind of cuts the last sample off. But if you have two. Then they will keep on overlapping. Hmm. <laughs> Might need like a little one of those at the end here.
Sorry, guys, I'll turn it off. <laughs> and then just do this. Try that other one. Yeah, I, this one is—it's not my favorite sound. I would and and to program this this kind of stuff in would be pretty difficult. It does kind of sound like it now. Although I should probably do this. But see, it still sounds a bit, a bit. Um, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't sound too realistic. Yeah, indeed. It sounds a bit like the, well, maybe not even the Mortal Kombat movie soundtrack, but more like the classic Mortal Kombat game soundtrack, you know? It sounds like one of those gongs um, from like a really old kind of thing. Um, I might have some better ones. Let, let, let me just search for a symbol and just go to my sample library because I'd probably have some good ones here. Uh, dun, 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 dun. That's already better. But I need more like a... A, a, well, you know what kind of sound I need. Oh, wait, what did I do? Let me undo that. Um, China symbols. Do we have rolled China symbols? That would be really nice. I do have some. Epic symbols. Symbol roll. Oh, here we go. Uh, a bunch of ones. Yeah, I'll probably look for one. Oh, there's a bunch more now. Oh, now we got snare rolls from from cymatics. Okay, <laughs> I'll find for a good one at some point. Um, I'll find for I'll find a good one at some point. They also used it, this gong sound in the Efteling. <laughs> nice. I would. It uh, doesn't surprise me. It does have that that like that typical sound. Um, <laughs> <laughs> of course I know that place. I went there as a kid. Like every Dutch kid has been, probably. <sighs> the one needs to be here, but I'll find one. Should I maybe bring the base Kodo in there? Should 
Should the base coder play the same thing, or should it play something else? We could try maybe having that play something else. Would maybe maybe be nice to do. Mm. That's actually pretty cool. Okay, let's see if we can bring this one in. Mm, let me actually reload this one before I do that. Because I think I changed a bunch of things. Um, dun -dun. That one. Yes. Yeah, I definitely need some kind of a wind chime or or a symbol roll like a uh, like one of those classical Asian symbol gongs things. Um, I definitely need something in there, and 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 I think indeed a wind wind chime or something towards the end here would be nice. Um, but I could also do that with the with the Kodo, like with that one. But then I would have to follow the actual uh, scale. This is more like for setting the vibe at the start. Ooh, you know what I could also try? Have the first part played by the base Kodo. Like this. Then it needs to be lower, though. Let me just do this real quick. Play with the velocities a bit, but... Not sure with what which one I want to start. I kind of like that base code to start off with, though.
not sure on that one. I'll just leave it for, at this one for now, but I can always maybe switch that up. So let's bring that flute in. I think that would be a nice one. Oh, that's the wrong one. Let's add a bit of reverb to that. Okay, so what do we have here? We have legato. Yeah, we have a legato. Okay, nice. Um... Where are the, I, I haven't used this library yet, so I have to figure out a little bit where everything is. Those are breaths, okay. And these are the key switches, right? Yeah, okay. Heated, thrills. Okay, so how do you do the legato thing? Let's have a look. Uh, okay, Legato is triggered by Velocity, and it's Velocity 1 to 99. Okay, that's what we need to know. So, so everything, if, if I play softer notes, then I can do Legato bends, which is cool. Okay. Ah, uh, man, I knew that, I knew that, that, that attraction. <laughs> the Indian water, water lilies, yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> it's called Indi... It, yeah, it's it's like, what is that? It's not... It's it's Indonesian, right? Um, it's like... It, it's Indonesian water lilies, right? That's what it what, what it's about. It's not about India. It's about Indonesia. If I if I'm remember that correctly. It has a soundtrack called African Beat, composed by a German, <laughs> and ends with a Japanese gong. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that, man. Um, ah, man, there was this other attraction that was also so goddamn weird. If I remember it correctly, it fe featured ping penguins. Um, it was so weird. Th that whole theme park is so goddamn weird, to be quite honest. If I think back back to it now, I'm like, damn, that was actually really weird. If you look at those things. Okay, let's just play this and see if I can uh, play some uh, flute on top of it. There we go. Now, are these also controlled by the mod wheel? What did I... What's that? Did I automate something? I don't know. Let's get rid of that. That shouldn't be there. Wait, there's more? that why is that automated i don't know what it is but i'm gonna get rid of it <laughs> um let's go to the mod wheel let's see if this is actually also controllable by the mod wheel that would be really nice yes
Maybe even stop the flute there. Bum, bum. Yeah, there's, that's where the taiko is gonna come in, so I'm probably gonna add some kind of a string instrument here. The Fakir? No, I don't think so. Um, damn it, what was it called? I kind of want to know it now. It was not... You had the... the um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a couple of Dutch names. The Droomvlucht? <laughs> it was not that. Um, God damn it, what was it called? It was this it was this writing you would go in in it you would sit in this thing and it would go through all these different rooms I think and there were dancing penguins and all kinds of other dancing fucking creatures and it was the most Ah uh, goddamn if you hear the song it's going to be stuck in your head for like at least a month God damn it if if I if I hear the name I'm like yes <laughs> that's it <laughs> Oh man now I want to know now I want to know. Um, what was it called? Um, wait, was that the Indi the Indian water lilies? <laughs> Might have actually been that. I think it actually is. It's been so long since I actually went there. You know what? Maybe it is actually that. Was that the uh, attraction you would go in? And then we go through all these different things and with like... I think there were like... Weren't you sitting in like a spinning cup or something like that? I don't know. It's been so long since I've been there. Like, I must have been probably... I don't know, maybe six years old or something. Damn, that was good. <laughs> that was exactly what I needed. Holy shit. I managed to play it right for once. I mean, that's a good start. Not gonna need that extra note there. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna gonna quantize this one.
and then we're gonna ma gonna have to make this bigger right we're gonna have to add more stuff brass and all that kind of st kind of stuff like big brass and shit oh this is going into a good direction though um i like this <clears throat> what strings is this is it's actually not just strings um it's um a polyphonic strings uh let's say let's see it's a horn ensemble plus violins and violas so it's basically three different orchestra sections at once um you got the horns right the, most of the horns that's what you hear most most of it is actually horns but there's just some strings in the background as well And I mean, there's a, a lot of reverb on it, though, because this is how it sounds dry. And obviously, I need some reverb on that, so I just drenched it in reverb, actually, because I think this whole track could be quite spacious. Um... And that is from uh, the Symphobia 2 library, um, which is really good, actually. But I really like this uh, kind of a, uh, kind of a, uh, yeah, I, I really like this combination of having like the horns with the, the, the strings, the higher strings. It doesn't include the low cellos, um, because you'll probably have that, have those playing something else. But like the higher uh, violins, uh, or like the violins and the, uh, the violas are higher pitched than cellos, of course. Um, it would be nice if those play like the same thing as the horn, so that's why they included that patch, I think. Um, but it's a really nice patch. I was just looking through the patches and it sounds absolutely great. I think there's even a... Let's go and check. I think there's even a... Boom, where is it? Symphobia 2. There's also, yeah, there's also a legato version that might actually be really cool to do. I think it's this one. Yeah, that controls the dynamics with the mod wheel, so that's good. This is a legato version of it. Since I'm not playing, like, any chords with it, but more like a lead melody, it would be wise to change it to a legato version. But then I have to make sure that the notes are actually overlapping. Um... Well, I mean, horns are, um, there are a type of, what is it, what are they? Are they woodwinds? No, they're not, right? It's a, I, I'm not sure what kind, what type of, well, they're not, yeah, they're woodwinds, I think. Horns are woodwinds, yeah. Um, brass is more stuff like trombones and trumpets and saxophones, stuff like that. Um, this is more like a, yeah, this would be a horn instrument then. Um, or at least a part of it. The, vi the violin and the violas are strings, of course. What? The horn is brass as well. I mean, I don't, I don't technically know if horns are woodwinds or brass. Um, like French horns and stuff, that is like woodwinds, right? Or are woodwinds more like flutes? Yeah, I think that's the case. It, it has all to do with the mouthpiece. If it is... 
a brass mouthpiece than it is brass. Oh, really? Okay. Well, you learn something new every day, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I guess you'll just learn something new every day. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't even know, like, all of that stuff. Well, let me duplicate this one. Let me uh, load up some brass. Mm, let's go for the Albion one. Brass. Let's do the brass low. So this is going to be brass, I'll just call it brass for now. I think I'm going to have that play the bottom notes of the chords. So that will be D, C, F, and then D again. I'll start with that. So... And probably the piano is going to change here as well. Like, it might actually change to just chords without those extra notes. I'll uh, figure that out at some point. I don't have the old version anymore of the piano, right? No. No. Yo. Shut up. Hello? Okay, good. Stop. <laughs> I don't know why that happened. We got a note that got stuck. Okay. Um, well. <laughs> Hitting the stop button a bunch of time works.
don't know why that why that happened. What 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 happened there? It sounded out of tune for a little bit. Has it automated something weird again? No. Or did it? Channel pressure? Wait, that might be when I played stuff in, actually. No, the data entry. What is that? Why is it automating that? Is that something in the contact instrument that's just changing? Hmm, weird. Not sure. See, it, it does something weird there. Goes to a pitch that's too low, or is the, the note just wrong? No. Weird. Why does this note sound weird? It's a C note. Why does it sound like... What is it? A B note? I think the C note is bugged. <laughs> For some reason. Let me save this. Let me save this and I'll quickly re-load uh, the project because this is kind of weird. Yeah, some VST nonsense. I'll just uh, quickly reload the project. That'll probably uh, fix it. Sometimes stuff like that happens. Probably like, uh, I don't know, maybe I hit the note twice on my keyboard really short after each other and somehow it got stuck or for some reason and then, uh, you know, it's it's bugged after that, so. I had that sometimes. Uh, I, I have that sometimes with other plugins as well. Um... Not that often though, it's not like it happens a lot. It's like every now and then, I, I, I know I have it, I had it a couple of times with plugins. I'm not sure if it happened on this computer though. Might have been a different computer. Okay, let's restart Ableton. Yeah, every now and then it just happens, I don't know. Weird stuff can happen when it comes to uh, software. It's, it's In the end, it's just like any computer, right? Like, computers can have issues. <laughs> and the, the, the first thing to try is always to restart whatever you're using. Because about 95% of the time it will fix it. Yeah, I think it, it's like, it, yeah, it just chooses the wrong sample for some reason. I don't know why. It's uh, reloading uh, Ableton right now, so just a little bit. If there's any questions, by the way, just uh, let me know in the chat, or if you're new here, and if you want to be a part of my Discord community, because I have a Discord community, I normally make drama bass, but today I make something different. Um, you can join my uh, Discord server. If you want to do that, then you can find the link below the live stream. Um, yeah, let me reload the project real quick. Ableton taking its time loading. Yeah, it's loading the whole project, right? It's like quite a bit of stuff, actually. It has to load all the contact instruments, so it's quite a bit. I did I did resave all the all the contact libraries though, so it's 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 loading a lot faster than it used to do. Okay, okay there it's, it's back. Um I switched quickly to a different um, a different channel on my uh, MIDI controller, 
I have presets on my MIDI controller, and some of the presets have like um, things auto mapped to stuff in Ableton. So maybe something I touched something during playing or something, and that automated something. Let's see. Can I still play? Yes, but I don't hear anything. Why is that? Is it me or? We have audio, but not on the master track. Oh, wait. What? The master volume was all the way down. I think it has to do with those presets on my uh, on my controller. Let me just quickly switch to a different one. I forgot which group it is that I need to work on. Let's see. Does that actually do something now? Okay, I think we're good. Okay. We are back. Yeah, I think it's uh, my um, MIDI controller. I, uh, I have one knob on my MIDI controller, which is getting a little dodgy. I've been using this thing for so long, so I probably need a new one at some point. Um, but there's one of the sliders. I have this, um, what is it called? The Action 49. Um, it's, still, it's even the first generation Action, so it's not even a, one of the newer ones. It's like the first generation Action 49 that they released. Um, but there's one of the sliders. I think it's the most right slider. And for some reason, even if I don't touch it, every now and then it just seems to trigger a MIDI message, a MIDI CC message. And if that slider just so happens to be connected to the master volume, which in some presets it is, then suddenly my volume is all the way down on the master track. So what I just quickly did is I basically just quickly turned um, all the mapping of the sliders off. So now it should not happen again. But that's kind of what was going on. I was like, why do I, don't I have any audio? Um, I, 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 di I did remove it from the preset, but maybe it somehow got restored to the default settings or something. Um, where were we? I need to piss again. This sounds different now. We are not on the right thing. Where is it? Octaves. See, it has changed this one. Photo. What was that? What did we have here? We have that, that little roll thing. Where was that again? Articulations. Um Oh, it wasn't here. Yeah. There we go. Because I was um I had this selected and I was playing and I probably hit the key switch. There we go.
Okay, let's see. We go down to F there, so... Okay, I'm gonna do some mod wheel automation on that because it's probably controlled by the mod wheel. Yeah. No, but that um, I'm I'm actually going to change the other parts in this section. I just need to figure out like the brass is going to be layered with a bunch of other things. This is just the first layer, um, and it'll probably be a little bit quieter. But it's going to be like towards the end of this whole thing that um, probably the the kodo is going to be taken out completely. You know. It's probably just gonna disappear completely. Um, there might still be like a higher melody with the shamisen, we, which we haven't used yet. And then um, it's basically just gonna play what the Kodo was doing, but then with like, um, maybe even with these horns, you know, or maybe with something else. Um, maybe the shakuhachi flute playing this melody of the Kodo on top of some brass and some strings to kind of finish it off. I really want to make like the drums bigger in this section as well. Kind of like build up towards the end and really build that tension. And then when I completely stop, that's when I will repeat the sort of like the intro kind of thing one more time on the end and then end it in the proper way. That's how I'm thinking I want to make this whole thing. So that would be, what is that going to be? Like what, two minutes? Two minutes is a great length for like um, an intro for every episode of, the, of these videos because uh, every, every, you're going you're gonna to see it like this. When these episodes start, um, it's going to start with like, I don't know, maybe two minutes of like 
just cinematic shots of what is going to be built in that video but not like actual full overview shots but more like close-up detail shots um, so that you just get a little bit of a teaser of what is going to be built in that particular episode within the game city skylines and then um at the end and and then during this thing you basically get to see those shots then maybe maybe towards the end where it becomes really epic you're going to see a few more wider shots where you can see more of like the whole kind of thing that that was built or more parts of the whole uh, city um and then towards the end ended with like one more little thing um and then it's going to go into like the actual gameplay thing and then on the end of the episode i will probably have a longer version of this um which is maybe four minutes or five minutes long so maybe just maybe so basically just an extended version and then that one is going to include like the full cinematic shots that i made for the episode so that's basically what i'm envisioning <clears throat> but man i need to piss so i'll be back in just a bit how late is it it's 12 30. we have well let's say we have about an hour more on this live stream so let's say if let's see if we can at least get like the main first short version of this uh, thing done like the one that i would use for the opening of the episodes and then we can, then i can make like the extended version a different time maybe next week or maybe off stream i don't know but um yeah that'll be a good start so i'll, I'll um loop it with that first section as well because it's kind of cool kind of starts better now and um yeah i'll be back in just a little bit and then uh we'll work on this more for i think about an hour or so so i'll be back and if Maybe a few minutes.
Okay. Um, with the strings, that brass makes a lot more sense. Um, it's more like as an extra layer, as opposed I forgot to actually play it with the strings just now. Um, I kind of want to do these strings, but then with like, right now I'm using the Omnisphere strings, which, which do kind of sound all right. But I think it would be even nicer if I can replace them with a contact um, string library um, and use that. That would maybe be better. Um, this layer, th this one, it, it is a nice sound, but I don't know. Like, it's also a really, um, how do you say it? How do you say it? Um... Yeah, it's pretty recognizable, this one. I've, I've used it a lot. And even though I like it... I might replace it with like actual an actual string library, but who knows? We'll see. <sighs> yeah, so I'm thinking Having the base Kodo do a little run up t up the scale, right in this section. Oh. In this section. So we are on... Yeah, the, just a D minor here, so... Let's see if I can do one here. Uh, it doesn't have that higher note. That's a shame. It doesn't go high, higher than that. I wished it, it would go higher than this. That would be nice. But it doesn't. But, maybe... What is the range on the Shamisen? Um... I still need to use that one as well because that is like the classical Japanese instrument. Maybe I'll have the maybe I'll have the melody played with the shamisen and use the bass kodo for something else. Let's see what that sounds like actually. If I move this to here. Need to bring it to a different pitch, though. And it doesn't have the pitch bends on the start of the note, but I can add those manually. Like, just really short pitch bends at the start of notes is something I also do when I, when I jam, you know, on my keyboard. Like, if you... God damn it. Why doesn't it just switch to the... Does anybody know that? Like, you can turn it on, I think, that when you switch to a different track, it automatically switches the... which track is armed. Which one was that? It's one of the settings here, I think. Well, I'll figure it out after the stream, but...
See those little... It's just adding like a really short pitch bend to the starts of notes to make that kind of sound. So it doesn't have to be part of the library. Mm. even be able to use this one for that kind of thing probably do that on the Kodo actually <clears throat> but that Xiaomi Sen doesn't actually sound that bad for this section Yeah, the reverb is just a Valhalla room. It's just a Valhalla room on the Abbey Church of Fossa Nova preset. It's a really beautiful sound. Love this reverb. Yeah, that run is perfect, but it doesn't sound right with this scale. See? It doesn't sound right with that, but a Kodo is a good instrument to do those runs on because it has a bigger range, I think. Well, a slightly bigger range, yeah. It has, I think it has an octave more than the bass Kodo has, so... It could be done to uh, make that run that I had earlier, which was, I think, here? Yeah. Do it on this one. Uh, let me make a copy of this track so I don't lose the MIDI that's on it. Which, I mean, it's turned off for now, but it's kind of still nice to keep because I might want to use it. Okay, it goes up to here. But I have an extra, extra octave there. <clears throat> I'm definitely going to add more runs and uh, little details and that kind of stuff. But I kind of just wanted to uh, make the whole kind of rough sketch today. And then it's just a matter of going in and adding like, especially like those contact libraries. Um, like for instance, the Shakuhachi flute part. Like this part. I have that flutter uh, set to the aftertouch. So, for instance, I could go in here, go to... Where's the aftertouch? Which one is that? Um, is that one named? Oh, it might actually be one of these right here. Not sure. Does anybody know what the Aftertouch MIDI CC is in Ableton? <laughs> because I never use Aftertouch. But, like, I could automate that and then uh, basically. Or does it get like a name? I think it's one of these, but I'm not sure. But like automating stuff like the flutter and that kind of things are really going to make it a lot more realistic. And playing with like the, the you know, offsetting the notes from the grid. Um, so yeah, that's, that's stuff I'm definitely going to have to do afterwards. Oh, 
What a vibrato, of course. Although this vibrato is very... Very little vibrato, actually. thinking of doing like a little different section on the end here. Might even go down more, um, start at a lower. I want to end on A, because that's the top note of the D minor chord. And we have that range, nice. That's what we need. <clears throat> That's also better. I uh, accidentally hit a key switch. Uh, that's the that's the only annoying thing. Where is it? Oh, we also have vibrato patch here. Ooh, that that's nice with the octave. I can work with that. That's better with the pizzicato one.
Oh yeah, of course I can draw that key note switch on key switch node underneath. What is it? It's uh God damn it. What is that? The F below that. Okay. That one. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? <laughs> okay, I do like that it starts like this, but maybe not as high as it is right now. <laughs> You'll fall asleep. Yeah, we're making... Uh... Sweet music. We'll wake you up. So, I have these chords, but I did change the piano to include a different chord here. So I'm going to try to make a new version of these. Based on those chords. Wait, let me just quantize this real quick. I actually came up with a different chord there that actually seems to work really well with this string the strings as well so we now have D minor let's see we have D minor to C what is that a C and a D and a G on top what is that let's analyze this real quick so we have is that a C suspended second C, D, G, yeah. So we have C suspended second as the second note of the skill now, of the chord progression now. And then we go into the F major with an added something, with an added minor seventh. Yeah. So what is that? An F major seventh then, I think. And then we go back into D minor. But it's a little bit different than it was before.
See, now we can really start doing stuff like that. See, going up that scale is just really going to work very well in stuff like this. But I, I do think the strings come in a bit too early now because I kind of want to leave this section to have the brass playing uh, or the strings with those horns, that, that, that interesting sounding patch. See, it would be weird because that is already the vi uh, violas and the violins together with the horns. So it would be weird if we then have another string, full string ensemble playing a chord progression underneath it because I mean, let's be honest, the violins and the, and the vi viola players are already busy doing something. So, really only the cello players could be doing something in this section. Unless we have two viola sections and two violin sections. But, is that realistic? <laughs> so, I want to keep the strings away from this section. Maybe add a, a, a cello ensemble here to play some lower notes of the chord progression or just the root notes of the chords. And then in this section, where the brass is going to come in, this is going to stop. So then the violas and the, um, the violin players are actually not, not busy anymore. So that's when they are going to play um, along with the chord progression and actually play the other notes of the chords. So this is going to be really cool. I really like what this is going to sound like or what it sounds like already. I mean, obviously, real instruments are great, but the orchestral libraries that we have now and contact libraries that we have now have really come a very long way. Um, I mean, a good example was that um, that live stream I did a, a little while ago with that uh, Shreddish 3 library, which I actually still uh, am going to continue uh, one day. I'm not sure when, but I will definitely continue working on that as well. Um, that was a really really good example of like how much contact instruments have developed because yeah there is there are still differences and there are like these subtle nuances that are very hard to capture you know in a vst library and i agree with that there's like always that that physical element of like the person actually playing it you know and there's these imperfections that you get for for instance if you're playing a string instrument if the finger slides across you know the neck of the instrument you're gonna hear a sound of that and depending on the mic setup you might hear more or less of that so it's those imperfections that are really difficult to re recreate and still like even on that field they have improved so much with like adding those little, like on the Shakuhachi library here, there's these, these grace notes that happen at the attack of sounds, but they don't happen always because you get like the options to set up a percentage of how often you want that to, to happen. So it, it has that element of randomness and that is something that I feel like adds a lot to the, to the realism. And when it comes, I would say right now, a lot of these instruments don't sound that realistic yet. Like, what I would have to do is really go in and automate a lot of different things, like play with all the velocities and, and, and really go through, and that's going to be a lot of work. Um, that's probably going to be more than one stream of work, I guess. But that is really going to gonna make a big change. And I feel like with contact libraries, the more work you put in into adding those little nuances, the better it's going to sound. Um, when you just, you know, play in some notes and call it a day, that's usually... It can sound nice, but if you're working on like some electronic music and you just need some strings or some, some orchestral layer to kind of spice it up a bit. But if you're really going for like an authentic sound, then yes, you have to do a lot. Um, a lot of automation. Oh yeah, I, I, I know. Like the, the, the libraries these days are in fact used a lot in, in, in film music. Um, see, the thing is, not every film has a huge budget for the music, you know? It's film, and, and even though the music is, is like half of the film, it's still considered always like much less important than 
the actual budget for the film itself. Like, the budget for the music is usually only a fraction of what the budget for the actual film is. So, some movies, the budget of the music is actually a lot bigger, and that's when you would see them bringing in big orchestras. And still then, the, the composer usually, he just composes the whole thing on his computer with libraries, and then finally, they le when everything is written, then they let it play in by an orchestra. But on, on the movies where the budget for the music is not that big, and they don't even have the money in the budget to, you know, get an entire orchestra in a room and record that, a lot of times they'll just use a library. Because most of the time they sound realistic enough, and, and the watcher of the movie is not really gonna, gonna... Well, they're not gonna notice that it's not a real orchestra, let's be honest. Um... So yeah, it's it's like it is in fact used a lot. It, it really depends on the budget of of the film. If it's like a bit big Hollywood production, then usually they'll have enough of a budget to at least get an orchestra in the room uh, in the studio and and record it. But if it's just you know like some kind of a let's say uh, um, you know a movie from not a big a big studio like not Disney or something like that, but just a smaller studio. Um, which there are a lot of movies like that, you know? Everybody starts somewhere, right? And and you're not gonna have the the budget to get a full orchestra in a room. That's just not gonna happen. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's really interesting. Let me close my window. It's getting a bit a bit cold inside. <laughs> Yeah, you know, libraries are expensive, but a, a real orchestra is indeed a lot more expensive. You gotta think about so many things. You know, you gotta pay the studio, you know, you gotta rent the studio. And let's be honest, you're gonna rent a big studio. You're not gonna be able to rent just your average recording studio. You need a huge studio that has a theater or a church room or something like that. So you can capture capture that that natural reverb as well with like room mics and shit. So, you know... Ideally, you want to find a really nice sounding room as well. And if you want to rent that, well, think about it. You might have to rent it for more than one day. Who knows? If it's like a lot of stuff, it's if it's for a full movie, might not even be able to play everything in one day. You know, you might need more takes. I don't know. It's going to be quite a bit of work. You got to pay all the musicians. You got to pay for all the gear. It's going to be super expensive to do something like that. That's that's literally only possible if you're, like, having a big Hollywood movie production company behind it. <sighs> okay, so let me move this to here. That's where the strings are going to sound like that. In this section, the strings are going to be much smaller sounding. Yeah, I'm going to split the strings up. Because this is annoying me. Let's um see. This is the horns. Let me just do it like this. Um, horn plus viola. How do they call it? Oh, they do this. And then plus... Something like that. And then I can have cello playing in this section, so let's... I can just duplicate this. Get rid of that. And let's have some cello in this section. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, let's see... Bass cello... I guess this one is... I could also take the polyphonic one, actually. Don't really think I'm gonna play legato stuff with that one. Yeah, so we can use that in this section. Probably just playing, like, the bottom notes of these chords. 
I mean, they could even play like actual chords, but. Let's just start with this. Let me turn those strings off for now. have it playing an octave higher actually oh that's too high okay then we're gonna play an octave lower let's add some mod wheel movement to that as well That we kind of get like more of like a swell kind of feeling. Let's start a little bit higher. I could even go down on the end here. Oh, that's too high, okay. I might want to do a, a little pause here. So just have this, then have a pause of like, what, maybe a four beats or something, and then go on. See what that's going to do. Do this.
Maybe even longer. And then this one is going to cut out. I'm just going to go full orchestra on this section with maybe the flute on top. Um, later, Carido. See you next time, man. See you next time. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> you're going. Sorry. I'm like, I, I was reading that uh, wrong. Later, Alex. I hope to see you next time as well. And if you're not in the discord server yet then check out the invite link in the description below the stream you'll find it there i have a discord server where we talk about music production and you can join and basically just uh yeah have fun <laughs> i guess thanks for being here man i'll see you uh next time yeah I, I know you're not going anywhere i read that wrong my fault So maybe do have like one more Tycho at the end. Okay. Let's have a little look. What are we going to do now? Um, I do like that gap there. I, I think that is going to be nice. I need to work on the gap, though. I need to work on that section and how it ends here. But that would be good to do there. And then go into this section. Now, the brass is really dry, so let's add some reverb to it. Okay, so the brass, I think I'm going to have that follow the chords.
maybe also bring back these the extra hits here maybe actually do more stuff here Yeah, definitely have some more of that stuff going as well. I'm not even sure if the piano is going to continue in this section. I don't use the life enhancement thing whatever that is um yeah so i think we are making a lot of progress in with this one um the strings can maybe be added here just for now just to fill it up a bit
kind of asking for a, an E note there, which is kind of weird, but... Hmm, maybe it'll work. I mean, it kind of works. Okay. It's uh, going to be the end of the live stream, boys. Um, it's uh, almost 1.30 for me right now, which means that it's definitely going to be the end of the live stream. But I think we uh, finished the rough sketch of this whole thing. Now it's just uh, having to go through this whole thing and making it better. But it actually uh, didn't turn out that bad. Like, I, I still need to do a lot of work on the taiko drums. That's one thing I really need to do a lot of work on. Because the taiko drums, I've only really used that big one. And there's all these smaller ones as well that I can use for, like, accents and all kinds of stuff. Especially in this last part where I added, like, a bunch more. Um, but man, did we make something fun today? You missed the show. Well, you can go back, but um, you have to uh, go on my channel because there's probably three different live streams for this particular live stream. Um, for some reason, the connection got cut out two times during the live stream. Um, I'm still not sure if it was Restream's fault or the fault of my internet service provider, but anyway, the live stream st restarted two times. So, um, yeah, I guess it's a three-part live stream. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want to see the entire thing, then you can find it on my channel, of course. But um, I'll just play you what we made today. So...
Okay, that last piano note shouldn't be there. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a rough sketch. I, I want to add a bunch of, like, I, I really need, like, some cymbals and some metal kind of stuff in here in the percussion. I need more drums um, to make it more epic. I need something here in this gap to fill it up, kind of to, not to fill that entire gap up, basically, but kind of just make that transition better, um, especially how it ends here, and then, yeah, working on that. And then definitely working on this section a lot more as well to really make it bigger and and much, well, a lot bigger, actually. Um, yeah, this would be a good thing uh, to do. But I'm, I definitely am I'm happy with what we have now. This would be a good first start. And um, yeah, like I said, I then need to make an extended version of this, which it actually has a lot of space for. All I have to do is just work on these progressions and basically make them longer um, and add more stuff, you know? Um, maybe add a couple of extra sections and um, that can then be used for if I have like longer pieces of cinematic shots for that series um, yeah this would be good this would be really nice <clears throat> a crashing wave seascape maybe yeah that could maybe work on the end um, but maybe not a seascape maybe maybe wind instead just actual wind sounds because the there there is not much like there are not much seascapes in the whole city actually that i'm building there's a small piece of coastline but that is mostly occupied by like industrial areas and stuff so that's not really gonna be nice to have like a, a beautiful seascape <laughs> with it no it's it's gonna be like the, the the opening shots of the of the videos that i'm gonna that i'm working on are mostly gonna be like overviews of mountains with dense forests and stuff like that and that's where this would really fit well with and if we have some like wind blowing through trees or something like that that would be a good kind of foley sound i think um to add and maybe maybe uh maybe even some other you know sounds rain maybe could be nice stuff like that you know rain falling on top of leaves or i don't know sh stuff like that would be good especially for like the the end part maybe that would be a nice part where you could add that i wouldn't add it during the entire thing but maybe somewhere in the intro or somewhere in the outro would be nice that's when those kind of things work. You could do film and TV scores. This actually reminds me of a National Ge Geographic documentary in a good way, or just a wildlife documentary. Well, you never know. Like, um, I could I could probably make that kind of music. Like, if I spend enough time on it and do it more often, then I could probably do it. Um, and you know what? Maybe maybe doing those kind of videos might lead to something, you know, maybe somebody comes across them and I'll definitely put in the video that the music is made by me as well so that everybody knows who's watching. And who knows, maybe some somebody comes across it and thinks, hey, could you maybe make something for a video game I'm working on or, I don't know, a video or something? Sure. Like, if it pays, then why not? I would love to do that kind of stuff. But I would have to build up, like, a an actual, I guess, a repertoire of, like, things that you've made before you can actually, you know, show what you're capable of. <laughs> and, um, I guess this is good practice. Good practice, yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks for being here, guys. Um, it was a fun live stream. It was a fun live stream. It was something different than, uh, than normal. But I really enjoyed it. A lot of fun, actually. I might, uh, do more cinematic stuff every now and then do like a different theme next time i don't know come up with something else we could, we could come up with all, all bunch of themes you know like apple battle music or something like that <laughs> it would be fun to try out every now and then i think it's good and just gives a little break from drum and bass because if i'm just working on drum and bass every single week in the live streams you guys might find it really interesting i mean i'm not gonna gonna you know debate about that but for me, at least, it might actually get a bit boring over time to just work on drum and bass every single week um, with then, of course, the little feedback week in between. But but still, it's like, you know, it gets a bit it gets a bit redundant for me to just work on that every single week, especially because most of the time during the week itself, I'm also working on drum and bass, right? It's not just the streams. It's uh, during the stream I do drum and bass, but then when I'm working on, on music during the week, I'm also making drum and bass. So it's a lot of times it's just, yeah just want to do something else every now and then. Plus, that also, you know, gets me inspired a lot. It, it, you do different things, and it, that makes you, you know, come across different techniques. You learn a lot of new things, which is always good. 
and yeah cinematic stuff is definitely it's great for drum and bass as well it works very well in drum and bass uh, you don't you're probably not gonna add like your actual actual like gigantic orchestra in your drum and bass track but you know you might pick up some something like oh that low brass could actually kind of work in a drum and bass track or maybe maybe those horns would be nice as like a little layer in my intro you know and that's kind of stuff you 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 definitely pick up from this so yeah plus i i, I actually need this music so for 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 the videos i'm working on so yeah <laughs> it's a good it's a good time to be making this um so yeah guys thanks for being here thanks for being here with me and uh witnessing the the whole live stream issues that we had tonight but um even though we had issues it was still a very good stream so yeah i'm happy with how it turned out music is world just not wait music is music is a world not just one little box that's true that's true and I love like like film music just in general. I love listening to film music. I love listening to um, ethnic music as well, like like traditional music from all over the world. I love that kind of stuff. It's I don't know. It I find that really interesting. Um, whether that is Japanese music or or music from India or music from I don't know some Aboriginals in in, in Australia. I love that kind of sounds. It's it's something that I always had had an interest in. I don't know why. It's it's just. It's it's something that we don't use a lot in Western music, and I think that's with a lot of things I do. I've always been like I I always liked the things that were different. I guess like all my mates were were listening to Gabber music, and if they produced or DJed, they were doing Gabber music. I went into into the hip hop and drum and bass world. You know, I was always that that one would we, we would do it opposite. Um, and the same thing with like music, like everybody listens to pop music, you know, and, and, and like mainstream music. And I just I'm like, no, I, I, I like other stuff, like completely different things. Um, and sometimes I'll even I'll even listen to like traditional music if I'm if I'm in the mood for that. Um, why not? Might inspire me, might 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 learn some new things or might actually find some samples that that happens a lot, actually, that that'll just listen to some some traditional music and suddenly you're like you hear this great percussion sound or great percussion loop even and you're like holy shit i gotta sample that <laughs> and and that's great i love that so yeah we might we might do these kind of things more often it would be fun to do we want to think we'd have to think about what other kind of themes we could tackle cuban uh cuban uh music <laughs> latino stuff i don't know we could do all kinds of stuff um we would have to think maybe i'll put up a poll every now and then when i want to do one of these streams and i'll just put up a poll and see what you guys think and what you guys want me to do um that could always be fun and definitely put me out of my comfort zone um which i'm all up for i'm all up for putting me out of my comfort zone i just sometimes gotta be pushed a little bit to do a particular thing so yeah, I'll be um I'll be in the Discord after the live stream, so um I'm gonna stop now. I'll be in the Discord then, and um if you're not a member, I'll uh, grab you guys an invite real quick. Probably everybody who's watching is already a member, but I have to do this in case no in, in case somebody is not. So it should post that in the chat right now. And if you want to be a member, then uh, join, and I'll see you there after the live stream. And if not, then uh, it would mean a lot if you join, uh, if you tune in again next week on uh, Friday, um, around 8 p.m. Amsterdam time is usually when I start. Some it kind of depends. Today it was like 8:30 or something like that, but it's around 8 p.m. that I usually start. So um, if you want to join in, then that's where you can find me next week on my YouTube channel. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So I'll see you guys again next.